In this video, we're going to start seeing the procedure to carry out a representative or a figurative painting. From now on, we will divide this procedure in three phases. The first is what we will call the painting definition. The second, that we have already introduced in the last video, it's the representative analysis. And the last, it's of course the action itself of painting, what we have previously decided. These are the three phases that consciously or unconsciously every artist will do to carry out a representative painting. Here we will focus on the painting definition. We will see what it is, we will make a couple of examples, and we will discuss the importance that the preliminary study has in this first phase of our work. This is the preliminary step where we will decide what we're going to represent on our support. And this very important part of the painting process, we will define an idea, we will study a subject and a scene. At the end, this is exactly what a representative painting is about. It's about representing a scene. To define it, we must first decide what our scene is going to represent. In few words, what's the idea behind it? If we put it in this way, it seems that should be very important. But actually, the idea behind the painting could be very simple. For example, the representation of a basket of fruit a nice landscape, a portrait, and so on. We may decide to represent a religious scene, like, for example, in this Caravaggio's representation of the supper in a mouse that we can admire in Milan at the Barrera Gallery. Once we have an idea on what the scene is going to represent, we have to decide what we are going to put inside of it. In few words, we have to study the subject. For example, we have to choose what type of basket or what kind of food we're going to use, which landscape we're going to represent. We have to choose the person that we want to represent in our portrait and how he should be dressed. In the Caravaggio's painting, his choice were the number of people inside the scene, the type and the quantity of food on the table, how the people should be dressed, and so on. Another thing that we have to do when also the subject is defined is to study how we are going to arrange our scene. The first choice valid for any representative painting is the type of lighting that we want to use and most of all the direction where it will come from. Other decisions that we could make to define our scene are for example the position of the fruit inside the basket the angle where we are watching the scene from, if we're gonna represent a wide landscape or just a part of it. If in our portrait we are going to represent only the face or also the shoulders, eventually if we want to represent our model in a figure or full figure, and in this last case, if we're going to represent it standing or seated, in the Caravaggio's painting, he had to choose the position of the food and the beverages on the table. And he had to arrange the people inside the scene. All these decisions that we're going to make are going to help us defining our painting before even we start working on it. To better understand how the painting definition is going to affect our final work, Let's watch now this other painting that we can admire in London at the National Gallery. This is another Caravaggio's representation of the supper in a mouse that the artist made five years earlier. Although they are both based on the same idea, they are very different. The light in both painting comes from the top left side. But the first it's a very dark scene. We can't actually see what's on the background because it's really dark. While in the second, we can see the wall and the shadows. 
In the first, uh, the table is pretty simple. On the right, we have a carafe of wine and a glass. In the middle, we have some bread on the table and a couple of plates with some fish inside of one of them. The second is a more colored scene. The carafe of wine is on the left beside that we can see a transparent vase of water and a glass. In the middle we have a roasted chicken, some bread and on the edge we have a very rich basket of fruit. While on the right we can see a bowl. These elements were not present in the first painting we have seen. In the first in our scene we have five people, while in the second only four. So at the end, two paintings made by the same artist based on the same idea are represented with two different subjects in two very different scene setups. We're gonna show an example now. Starting from an idea, we're going to see one of the many possible ways to set up a scene for our painting. Let's say, for example, that we want to represent something about the Italian food culture. If we think carefully, we can probably carry out different ideas on how to represent it. Here, we're going to use a still life where inside we're going to put many different kinds of Italian foods and beverages. Once we have our idea, it's time we start studying the subject. As first thing, of course, we have to decide what types of food and beverages we are going to use. We're going to start searching within the most famous food. For example, the pasta is very used. Uh, but then, what type of pasta? We may choose spaghetti, macaroni, fusilli, lasagna, or we can represent a pizza. The pizza is probably the most famous Italian food worldwide. The cheese, that it's a very important part of our food culture. We have dozens of different ways to make it. The parmesan, the pecorino, the mozzarella cheese that we also use on the pizza. Or we may represent a salami or a ham. These are also very traditional Italian foods. In Italy, we use a lot of vegetables, for example, tomatoes. We use them everywhere. The basil is also very used. The fruit is a very big part of the Italian culture as well. Oranges from the south of Italy are very famous. Uh, apples from the north. The grape is very important all over the country. We eat it and we make wine out of it. The wine is a drink very important in Italy. The first representation of an Italian making wine probably gets back to the Romans. A more recent drink, but still famous, is the coffee. In Italy we drink mocha coffee, the espresso, the cappuccino. We could go on searching, but I'm sure we have already enough subjects to put in our painting. So it's time now to start studying how to arrange our scene. In this case, we may start by putting a coffee machine here, an apple, a tomato, a peach, an orange, a pear, a bottle of wine, a glass for the wine. And one piece at a time, we're gonna set our scene up. We have also to decide what we want on the background. For example, in this case, if we want a light one or a dark one. Once everything is inside our scene, we may have other decisions to make. Probably we want to fill the glass with some wine, or instead of the bottle, we want a carafe. If we want the pizza to be on a plate, or if it's better on a wooden board. We also have to choose where the light comes from. If we want it straight from the top, like in this case, or from the left, like in this other case. To illuminate our scene, we may decide to use a candle. But for example, in this case, since the background is dark, the whole scene gets out pretty dark as well. But if we change the background with a lighter one, the whole scene becomes brighter. 
and we can get also these nice shadows here behind. As artists, we should care about all the details. For example, if we want the pier to be down like this, or we want it up. Another consideration that we can do is if we want to seem so confused, or if we prefer something simpler like this one, for example. To help us working through all these decisions that we have to make to define what we want to paint, it's a good habit to make some preliminary studies. We actually have already done one when we did our first abstract painting. In that case, our study was focused on the fundamentals. We had to decide where we were going to position our figures, their colors, and how we were going to fit them in the painting. If we were going to use a sharp border or a fading, and eventually what type of fading, and so on. In that case, our preliminary study was more oriented to the representative analysis than on the painting definition, which was really easy. Normally, the preliminary study can be processed in more than one table. Of course, if the scene is very easy, we can decide what to do with just one drawing, or even without of it. But if the scene we are planning to paint is very complex, we may want to do more than one table. For example, as first, we can set the position of our subjects, and this may need some tables already, because we want to have an idea of how the scene looks in different configurations. Then we have to study how the lights get in our scene, because this will change the distribution of the colors. Also in this case, we can decide to study more than one option. According to the complexity, we may also want to study separately all the subjects inside the scene. Of course, if we use a model, we can actually do these preliminary studies working on it. So we can move our subjects inside the scene and see immediately how they look. We can move the light so that it gets in our scene by different directions. In this way, we can see instantly how the color's distribution changes. We can also shoot some pictures so that later we can compare them and see advantages and disadvantages for each configuration. Once we have completed all the preliminary decisions that we need to set our scene up, we are ready to move on. Our discussion on the painting definition is complete now. In the next video, we will talk about perception. If you enjoyed this video, we will really appreciate if you could click on like and subscribe to our channel. It will also help us very much if you could leave a comment. Thank you for watching this video and see you in the next one.